Hello everyone. Today we will continue our lesson from uh, unit one, and we will continue to unit two. Yes, and this session is session five and six. Uh, unit two is about connecting sentences and paragraph. So last week, or last session, we have learned about type of sentences and part of sentences. And also part of speak, and today we will, you know, uh, talk about uh, type of you know paragraph, especially the part of paragraph, or we can say that the element of paragraph. And now we can go to the next slide together. Okay, here are the contents that we are going to study about uh, sentences. Yeah, using attitude, grammar, and sentence structure. A word order, yes, attitude before noun mean we must know the function of attitude. And when do we use attitude? And the order of the attitude. Actually, attitude have a right, different type, but we mainly focus on you know a number of type. We cannot include all attitude in here. And we cannot learn only two sessions. Uh, mean we cannot finish only two sessions for this uh, lesson because we have more something to describe and to study about. Grammar and sentence structure for number two mean word order. Uh, attitude after the verb to be. Yeah, actually attitude can stand after uh, before noun and after verb to be. Yeah, we have. To study the order of attitude that stand before noun and attitude that stand after verb to be or linking verb. And the last one is the most important one in you know this lesson. Um, in what is a paragraph? We must know the definition of paragraph and the part of paragraph, or I can say that the element of the paragraph. All right, now we go to uh, the first slide. Here, attitude. Attitude is one part of speak, right? So an attitude describes a modified nouns and pronoun in a sentence. It normally indicates quality, size, shape, duration, feeling, contents, and more about a noun or pronoun, right? Attitude usually provide relevant information about the nouns, pronoun they modify. Or described by answering the question. So, what kind, how many, big one, how much, and attitude enrich your writing by adding precision and originality to it. Nouns. Okay, so to sum up, attitude we use to modify noun and to use to modify attitude. And we also use, you know, uh, attitude with a uh, different type of attitude like quality and size and we have you know special order of this attitude you cannot put the attitude based on your own mind because we have the rule for putting this attitude right in the order okay uh, next one is about example of this attitude like the team has a dangerous batsman what kind you see here the word dangerous that I have underlined here is an attitude we use to modify the word batsman in what kind what kind of dangerous and i have 10 candy in my pocket yeah the word 10 here is a number is also attitude is used to modify the word candy and i to express the number mean how many candy yeah, the third example, I love that red car. So which one? That here is modified the word red. Red is modified the word car. So red here is also attitude used to modify the word car. In which one? But I which uh, car that you would like to mention. And I earn more money than it does. Yeah, the word more here comes from the word much. We use more here in comparative form and then it's used to modify right the word money and we use it for what to ask 
and I the amount of money. Okay, next one, I have a fast car. The word fast is describing an attribute of the car. Yeah, like here, you can see car is a noun, fast is an attitude. I'm hungry. So attitude here is used after verb to be. The word hungry is providing information about the subject. Or we can say that hungry here is a attitude complement. Right, it used to complement the word I as a subject, as a pronoun. Next example, I saw a flying eagle. Uh, the word flying here is use an attitude to modify the word eagle. An American car very strong. Yeah, the word American is also an attitude, is called proper attitude. We use it to modify the word car, mean car from America. Chinese people are hard worker. Yeah, the word Chinese here is used to express the proper attitude that modify the word people to ask about nationality. Okay, uh, next slide. Here is the descriptive word. We have a number of descriptive words that you should notice. Yeah, like the word nice. Yeah, amazing, good, happy, delicious, kind, bad, small, love, rich, funny, and big. And in each, our word also have more descriptive word, mean descriptive attitude, like the word nice. We have like the word enjoyable, lovely, pleasing, amiable, charming, kind, delightful, and pleasant. And amazing here, we have astonishing, I cannot translate for you guys. Uh, please, you know, check the dictionary by yourself because we have to need, we have to save time. And I want you to practice, right? Checking dictionary, don't depend on teacher so much. Uh, I just do read. And then when you have my free time, please uh, check the meaning of, you know, this word and try to practice using them in speaking or in your writing in particular in making sentences or paragraph okay here we have like the word awesome fabulous like that and good we have excellent blessing wonderful and marvelous happy we can use the word amused bright charm cheerful okay and delicious here we have the, the word appetizing tasty or flavorful detectable rice crumbs mouse watering or yummy uh, joysies yeah kind we have simplistic warm-hearted generous amiable considerate uh, gentle and bad we have the word awful terrible horrible rotten grummy naughty dreadful and nasty next one small we have tiny the tie mini little slight minute skimpy and many extra Love, we had admire or do appreciate, yeah. Rick, wealthy, prosperous, woman, or well here. Yeah, the word funny, like I'm using comical, troll. And the last one, the word big, yeah. We have the word like huge, large, or immense. We still have a lot of, you know, descriptive too. I mean, word that describe a noun, a modified noun, like this word. You can take a look at this word. So the part of speak of this word are added to and can be used in different category and different situation. So now we move to the uh, next one about linking verb. Yeah, the reason why I put the linking verb or copular verb, actually in the book we have on the verb to be, but verb to be can function as linking verb and auxiliary verb or helping verb. Uh, based on the book, we use verb to be, right, as a linking verb. And I want to put more verb beside the verb to be. I mean, you can study more linking verb, not only one verb to be, because those linking verb can stand before attitude. So verb means so the power of action, and it can also connect idea. Yeah, when we talk about the word, when we talk about the meaning of the word, word can express both action and non-action that we call that verb. Right? Like sometimes like the word love, yeah, like the verb think, 
like the word hate, like or dislike, all of this uh, cross that verb because those verbs do not have action. But some verb like the word run, walk, swim, okay, speak, talk, and other verbs are called action verb because those verbs express action. So if we want to call it Wesley, then we consider them as a state of being verb. You know, all form of verbs are linking verbs. For example, I am is verb was, yeah. And desire verb that have to do with the five senses that I have, you know, mentioned earlier. Like the word, you know, inform, okay. Really, like the word feel, yeah. Okay, very good example. Okay, like the word feel, look, smell, sound, and taste. These verbs are called senses, right? A verb of sense. They are included in linking verb or state of being verb. Okay, you can see this example of linking verb in sentences. Like the tomato, smell, rotten. Yeah, the word smell here is linking verb. And the professor is absolutely sure the word is, is also linking verb. My brother gets mad when he's hungry. Yeah, the word get here is linking verb. Lean was tired until the profane is kicking. And the company stayed true to its founding principle. And the girls are happy because they are eating all together. That building is so uh, sorry, so, so justly decorated. And our job is almost done. Yeah, so where is the attitude and where is the verb here? Here, easy is a verb. And easier also means a verb because we use it to connect ideas, yeah. All right, now we continue to uh, study about paragraph. Yeah, so what is paragraph? Before we have learned about sentence, the meaning of sentence means sentence is a group of words combined together and has a complete sort. And after we understand sentence and we can practice writing sentences effectively and well so we develop all sentences I mean we combine sentences together to make paragraph so paragraph is a group about five to twelve sentences about one topic every sentence in a strong paragraph is about the same topic mean paragraphs start from five to twelve sentences but all those sentences must be the same topic mean all sentences refer to one topic a single topic right and all of the sentences is plan the right term main idea what does the word main idea mean the word main idea mean the most important idea Right in the paragraph about that topic, and when the writer want to write about a new main idea, he or she begin a new paragraph. Okay, a paragraph can give information, tell an opinion, explain something, or even tell a short story. If anyone asks you, when do we use a paragraph, and what does the paragraph give you? Paragraph can give information tell an opinion yeah when you want to tell your opinion and to express your opinion to someone you have to write and then you can write a paragraph to give enough information or detail information or your opinion to someone and you always plan something when you want to explain you need to write yeah as we have known language can be written and can be spoken when we want to express our idea our idea opinion to the public or someone we must speak and write but spoken language is informal and written language is formal the sentences are arranged logically so the reader can easily understand 
what the writer wants to say. And a paragraph has three, you know, parts. What is called topic sentence? What does the word topic sentence mean? Topic sentence is the first sentence of the body paragraph. Yeah, it, it, it is, you know, usually spent at the beginning of the paragraph. Simply put, we can say the topic sentence introduces the topic of the paragraph. Without topic sentence, right, the reader or the writer do not know how to write about and the reader cannot understand the main idea because topic sentence introduce right this is the topic of the paragraph and a good topic sentence will be broad enough not too broad but broad enough to allow for explication right but narrow enough that it does not require a paragraph that is too long so I mean the paragraph must be broad enough but not too narrow if it is too narrow, right, it cannot explain or give information or detailed information to the reader. The next one is about a part of the topic sentences that announces a specific area to be discussed is called the controlling idea. I mean, topic sentence has the topic and controlling idea. Controlling idea is like main idea. Yeah. So what does the word main idea mean or controlling idea mean? mean the part of the topic sentence that announces a specific area. You notice the word specific area. And I mean the most important idea, the most important thing that the writer must write or explain you in the paragraph, in the body of the paragraph. Notice how the topic sentence of the model that both the topic and the controlling idea. If you take a look at this example, like we mentioned, goal, a precious mentor is strive for two important characteristics. Goal here is a topic. Two important characteristics is controlling idea. So we have a topic, but we must know what should we deal with or we do with the topic mean goal here right is selected to talk about the characteristic mean the two characteristic of the goal we don't mention the bride yeah we don't mention something else but we mention the characteristic of the goal yeah and you can take a look at more example here Line number one, my sister is my best friend. Yes, my sister here. Next one, snowboarding is my favorite winter sport. Yeah. Okay, and next one, the last city I bought changed my life. Number three, there are three reasons why my cell phone is useful. Yeah, heading no wall fires the Harry Potter story. And have still into the English. And the last one, my part time shop taught me several new skills. Yeah, so my sister snowboarding, okay. And cell phone, yeah. Adding novel, okay. Part time job, all of these are called topic. Yeah. And all of these are topic sentences. They are not too broad and they are not too narrow. Okay, next one is about supporting sentences. The supporting sentences of a paragraph are uh, the sentences between the topic sentence and the concluding sentence. The supporting sentences support the topic sentence. The topic sentence stand at the beginning of the paragraph and introduce the topic right to the paragraph. But the topic sentence needs supporting sentences. We compare to the whole body of ourselves or the human being we can see. Topic sentence is like a head. You see, head is very important. But even head is important, but head needs body to have head. Right to work, 
Like if you want to swim, if you want to walk, if you want to run, if you want to ride, you need to use your hand, you need to use your, your leg. Okay, so that's why supporting sentences is like the body of human being. Right? It supports the sentences of a paragraph and give example and evidence. And there are several kinds of you know, specific supporting detail that we call example, statistic, and quotation. I mean, when we want to give example or specific you know, supporting detail, we must include example, statistic, and quotation to our body right, of the paragraph. Look at example below. We continue from the topic sentence. Like, first of all, gold has a lustrous beauty that is resistant to corrosion. For example, a Mercedes Donian coin remains as unfinished today as the day it was met 25 centuries ago. And another important characteristic of gold is its usefulness to industry and science. The most recent use of gold is in astronaut suit. Yeah, here are example of the supporting sentences that we use to explain and give information to the topic sentence about two important characteristics of the goal. Okay, the last one is about concluding sentence. What is concluding sentence? Concluding sentence signal the end of the paragraph and leave the reader with important point to remember. Concluding sentence serves two purposes. Number one, it signals the end of the paragraph. Number two, it leaves the reader with the most important idea to remember. It can do this in two ways. Number one, by summarizing the main point of the paragraph, we can summarize the main point of the whole paragraph, or we can repeat the topic sentence in different words. Then we use paraphrase. We keep the same information, meaning, but we use different words. But to summarize, I mean we use our own word. Right? We can use our own word and we can change right? the sentence, we can change uh, the idea and add more information or add more idea to the concluding of our paragraph. For example, we say in conclusion, goal is treasure, not only for its beauty, but also for its utility. So to sum up, we have two characteristics. One is about beauty, another one is about utility. All right. Thank you, you know, for right, watching and reading this uh, PowerPoint slide. I hope you guys will have any question to ask me. Thank you very much.